Hey everyone, here we are for the next build for Hardcore League Season 9. This is a build modeled after Will Ravengard, the Blade of Frontiers from Baldur's Gate 9. Arguably, Will should have been made a paladin because he is what would be considered good aligned character in the Baldur's Gate canon. But he is a warlock, and he is a fiend-packed warlock. We recreated the Blade of Frontiers here in DDO for Hardcore League 9. Human, main stat, charisma, followed by constitution, followed by a little bit of intelligence to get us our skill points. I will have all this posted. You know, we focus use magic device. Always helpful for your build to have use magic device, especially on the Hardcore League where you're on a first life tune. Our spell damage is fire, force, light so all of those go through spellcraft so we put points there we are using single weapon fighting so we need some balance so we're putting points in balance and we always like jump jump is a very useful skill in ddo ddo has a lot of areas where jump makes things a lot easier so what I will explain in this video is the leveling up process because you will not, what happens is that at level 32, you are fully invested in Enlightened Spirit. You have 40, I think it's 42 points in Enlightened Spirit. And then the rest of your points are in Tainted Scholar. And then you may have one or two points depending on how many universal points you have in Fade Arc Illusionist. We're really not using the human tree, so any extra points that we would get there at the end, we could use in Fade Arc, or we could use in Tainted Scholar, or Enlightened Spirit, or you could add, if you wanted to, another uh, tree that you, if there was something, a low-hanging piece of fruit that you wanted to add. But, so, to explain our approach to this, we are using single weapon fighting. For our purposes here, the reason that we're using it, you can see this down the bottom of the description for single weapon fighting, is that it improves your hit point bonus of heroic durability, which means that taking this feat and other feats like improved single weapon fighting, greater single weapon fighting, will give us more hit points. And that, for Hardcore League, is a good thing. It's why we're using it. The other reason that we're using single weapon fighting is that while at low levels, you'll probably be chain blasting initially when you're very low level, you could single weapon fight because we get single weapon fighting at level one. Once we get level 12 and we go into Enlightened Spirit, that would allow us to do single weapon fighting while we do our burst burst. We have our aura going and we're bursting and then in between bursts, we can hit with our single weapon fighting. Right now, we are just using a Queen Scepter. We could also use the Conjured Shadow Blade if we really wanted to. Primarily, what you're going to be doing is Chain Shape. That is going to be primarily where you're getting all of your damage. Now, you can see at level 7, I have a couple things going on. At lower levels in Heroic, Enlightened Spirit is not good until level 12 really isn't worth going into Enlightened Spirit until you can get Shining Through. So what we're going to do, because we're not touching this tree until level 12, is make up for the defensives that we're missing in Fade Arc Illusionist. Now, you could skip this and just get your immunity here. You get your immunity to fear here. We are getting our immunity to magic missiles here, our immunity to fear here. But what this allows us to do is to grab color spray, which you guys know I love CC. It's all about CC, DDO, especially on Hardcore League. It's all about that CC. And we will wind up with a few different CCs in this build. But the first and the most important for us at low level heroic questing is color spray. So we snag not only an extra point of charisma, but color spray. We get some mana. We get our blade if we need the shadow blade. We get You've Got My Back, which gives us immunity to magic missiles. And it buffs if you use shield or night shield. 
And then we also get Reality Bulwark, which is plus three to all saving throws and it makes us immune to fear. It's one of the best abilities that you can get out of Fade Arc Illusionist. I love it. Having fear immunity for Hardcore League is super important. Getting all your immunities, very helpful. In Tainted Scholar, the what we want first is chain shape. That's the first thing we go for in this trait. The next is a gear-based decision because I am a fiend pack warlock and my blasts and aura do fire and force damage. What I'm doing by taking utter dark blasts is I am turning my force damage into light damage. And the reason that I did that is because part of the Fey Wild gear set includes a ring called the Ring of Summer's Heat. This is a, it's a, a farm out in the swamp of the Feywild that gives us bonuses to fire, combustion, radiance, lore, and radiance. So with this ring on and Utter Dark Blast enabled, I've got now my, both my fire and now my blast is doing light damage, and that is boosted as well. So what it does is it increases our DPS. With the remaining points, I put points in boost defense because that would give us 10 action point bonus to armor class and PRR. That is a really big bonus in low level heroics getting plus 10 to your armor class. So for our purposes, that's going to really help us out. As you leveled up later, if you wanted to put points in these, you could. Uh, and then the next thing that's really important for Hardcore League, and you may ping pong some of these back and forth as you can get them, um, but don't count me out. This will increase your unconsciousness range, and that is very useful for Hardcore League. Now, it's not a lot. It's only 5, 10, and then 20. If you are in a situation where you're incapacitated, having this is definitely helpful because it can keep you alive. And that's the name of the game on Hardcore League. Personally, I think that if it's dead, it can't hurt you. So what I would do is go for Chain Shape and Color Spray, get Fear Immunity, and then with any leftover points, you can start filling these in. And what, what we basically do, we don't put any more points in, in Fade Arc as we level up, because we're only level 7. As we go up 8, 9, 10, 11... What we do is we add points to Tainted Scholar and we just keep going up and increasing our pack damage. We want to get our ability scores and we're also going to put points in Confusion to get Bewitching Blast. This is a, will be another one of our CCs later. Very important part of the build. Also in this tree we get Staunch which is something that we can use to gain temporary hit points and that is a lifesaver. We also need to make sure that we max out feigned health because that is a huge part of our build. Our spells that we take, and I'll tell you why feigned health is so important. First, we take jump, then we take false life. And the reason for that is what feigned health does is anytime you cast a spell, it will give you temporary hit points equal to 100% of your charisma. So... Even though False Life, when we cast it on us, is only 10 plus 1 bonus health per level, so it would be 17 for us, because we are using this ability here from Feigned Health, our False Life doesn't just do 17. You can see here is 66 when I cast it. It adds actually 44. That is a significant amount of temporary hit points. So now our hit points are over 200, which is a little bit better than the other uh, builds that we've done so far. And we can just keep free casting this over. It costs 15 spell points, but we can use it to heal if we really want to. You can just keep casting False Life on yourself over and over and over again. We also have potions and we can UMD a wand. Um, we have a couple other CCs that we're going to be using too that you can see here. I have a command spell that is quickened, and I also have a web spell that is quickened, and I have my color spray that is quickened. So we're using the Queen Scepter, and all of the spells that we have are quickened, and we are going to go into Chain Shape 
I'll show you guys the gear. It's all the same gear that I've been using for these build videos. We have the battle worn medallion for plus two charisma. The armor is a little different. I'm wearing the leaf mail seven piece Feywild set death block bracers with dodge on them plus four cloak of winter gloves of tranquility thorn boots. We have the necklace of bottled sunlight, the crown of snow. I've got the Archon. This is the 1750 helm for the event. The rings I have, Nocturne ring, really good ring. Gives you true seeing and improves your fortification. It's one of the best low-level Feywild rings for any build. And then, like I showed you, we have the Ring of Summer Heat. Um, I'm wearing the 10 Reaper Point Cloak. This is the 20 Reaper Point Archonling pet right here. And we have the 5,000 favor uh, horse that we will jump on right now and ride it to the quest. So the Blade of Frontiers probably should have been a paladin because of the way Will Ravenguard, if you have not played Baldur's Gate 3, uh, he, he is a very good aligned character and he acts like the defender of the people he basically is a paladin who in this new rule set because Baldur's Gate 3 is a flavor of 5e Dungeons and Dragons um, he's a warlock and he's a fiend packed warlock and he even though he could probably not be at what would be considered a good character to be a fiend packed warlock he's probably the the most good aligned fiend packed warlock that's ever been. Um, he sort of got a bad deal, and that's part of that storyline. But really interesting character. So we're going into this. This is a four level split. We're going in on elite. It's level five. We are level seven. They may alter that. They may make it a two level split. If not, I mean, these builds are all viable for really any split i mean we could do at level if we wanted to but for the purposes of these videos just to showcase what we're doing see so i color sprayed and that gave us a nice cc and then i just let chain shape burn them all down very simple we get our false hit points false life and i'll just group them all up color spray and then we burn them down with chain, chain shape. The haste came from the belt that I'm wearing, which is the, um, the, the black dragon scale tacit. It also drops out of the Feywild. The smuggler explains that the Anytime you kill a monster, it throws haste on you. The closest one is just to the southwest, across a small bay. And so we're not really utilizing single weapon fighting yet, but we are benefiting from the hit points. And we are just going to basically chain shape everything. We don't have to worry about mana so much on a warlock, but it still helps to be mindful of it. And if we, if we need it, we have web and we also have command. And I'll show you how, how useful command can be. So chain shape will kill him. And then for command, we have it quickened. He saved. You know, it's sort of like a 50-50. Even though I'm a charisma-based warlock, um, you know, it's still kind of hard to hit the DCs unless you really focus on min-maxing your, your DC. So that's something if you decide that you want to, you know, do a lot of finger of death and stuff, uh, you'd really want to get your charisma as high as you could get it and then focus on gear and feats that would raise your 
your caster DC, but since we're in low level heroics, we're not going to worry about it. And we sort of need to plan on having abilities fail, which is why I like to have multiple sources of CC. Um, so we can throw a web right there. So now we have a web down and then we can color spray. And if for some reason they're not caught in the color spray, we can command and you can see he's commanded. He's sat down, basically just forces them to sit down. And the good thing about command is it will stop their attack cycle and just make them sit down and it keeps them down for quite a while, enough to burn them down. So depending on how good you are at utilizing your mana and managing it between the web and the color spray, you really can lock down just about every monster on the field. And then every one that got away, you can do what I just did to this dude and hit him with command and make him sit down and then burn him down when So it makes it a really nice sort of casual experience for elite gaming where you have so much ability to CC and I just missed with all of that, but here's my color spray. Okay, so there we go. Now, a lot of people who chain, do use the warlock chain shape don't even bother um, with crowd control. What they do is they just kite but I think it's important to have a, 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 a CC that is useful uh, just because of the nature of the Hardcore League rule set. Like, you know, you've got one uh, chance and then, you know, you're in the penalty box and you have to start over again. So... Uh, because I value my time, you probably value your time. We want to maximize our time usage in this game and not die a lot, right? So having multiple CCs and ways to put temporary hit points on yourself and things like jump to move around and get out of the way, like these things will all contribute to keeping you alive. So this build is really fun. Warlocks are are not the best for Hardcore League, surprisingly, but they are really good if you are doing the Reaper later on because the way that Warlocks work is that they ramp up and in Epics they get a lot more of their damage dice back, their, El their pack dice and their Eldritch dice. So that that's a result of the nerfs that they experienced over the years um they used to get i think it was like 1d4 or 1d6 every level and then they made it every other level and then they made it every three levels and so low level warlocks in heroics tend to do really bad damage but you may be saying hey your damage looks really good and that's because I am sort of min-maxed right now in the sense that I went into Utter Dark Blast to do evil damage and I'm wearing the best-in-slot ring for that, which is the Ring of Summer Heat from the Feywild. So technically at this level, we are doing probably the top damage that you could do on this. You know, you may be able to squeeze out a little bit more, but... It's, you know, it's good, but it's not as good as the, I mean, you can see nine, four, like some of the numbers are really low. So you're, you're not going to be doing monster hits like we were doing on the cleric or on the favorite soul. Where sometimes you can hit crits for over a thousand, you know, but it's survivable and it does what it needs to do. You know, it will keep you in the game. It will get you through the quest. You have a lot of tools at your disposal. And 
with all of the various CCs, especially later on, once you get Bewitching Blast, it just makes it very, and you get more temporary hit points, you get staunch, like it just becomes very survivable, especially if you're doing Reapers in Epic or Legendary. Uh, Warlock is a good choice. It's not the best choice, but it's a good choice. Um, likely, if you were going to do that, depending on what you wanted to do in legendary content, um, you may it may be good to respec yourself in, as a constitution build, unless you really wanted to try to do like Finger of Death or Hurl Through Hell, uh, then you keep yourself charisma based, but. It's up to you. I mean, it really depends on your goals. You know, if you only care about getting to level 20, then you can normal quest and do Slayer Zones, and you don't need to worry about any really challenging content. So any build is going to work for you. Really, that's the first... For all of these builds, that's what I would recommend to you is the most important part of Hardcore League is understanding and keeping your goals in the forefront of the driving factor of why you're doing everything that you're doing. You need to know very specifically what you're there for, why you want it, and what, you know, what would be success, what would be failure. Some people go to Hardcore League just because they want the level 20 cloak or the 1750 reward, or they want to get the 5k horse. And that's a specific goal. But you may go and say, look, I don't really care about any of the loot. I just want to have fun and play with friends. Okay, well then, you know, any really any build is going to get you there. I would say the hardest, um, the hardest sort of content to go after is either the 5K horse or the 20 Reaper Point pet. But... Probably the 5k horse is the hardest only because it requires the most time. There's a, a lot of groups that run uh, Reapers in legendary content. So if you get a character to level 32, you could probably jump in that. And if you use a potion, even a like a 10% or a 20% potion, there are ways to earn potions in the game. You don't have to buy them on the TDO store, but you can get... 10 reaper points really quickly in legendary because the way that that reaper xp is calculated um you get more doing it in legendary for the first time is even better so that's what i would do rather than doing it in low level heroics also in epics you can farm for gear that makes doing the legendary even easier so that's what I would recommend for that. As far as 5K, it's just really the time. It's it, The quests do get progressively harder because as you get up into like level 17, 18, 19 quests, your power doesn't go up, but the power of the mobs, do, you know, they do get stronger. So it gets more difficult for you. But the groups are very tight usually at that level because it's a lot less people than the early game. On hardcore league so usually the people who are running level 17 and over quests they're usually all really good players and they know pretty much what they're doing and they're my experience on hardcore league is they've all been super helpful so you know if there's uh any issues or questions that you have with a particular quest uh it's worth talking to people because usually if you think there's a quest that you just despise and you don't know it and you don't want to run it because it's too hard. There's usually somebody around who not only knows that quest, but thinks it's like the easiest quest they've ever done and they can run you through it in five minutes. And that happens all the time with things. I mean, I know people who hate the pit and I know people who love the pit and they can solo it and they can do it in like seven minutes. You know, it's one of those things. It's DDO is just filled with a rich diversity of really talented uh, players and some really, really nice people. Anyway, so that's it for Will Ravenguard, The Blade of Frontiers. I had a lot of fun sort of thinking about what it might be to make this character, and I think that it'll be a lot of fun to play. I probably will play one myself. Um, 
And like I said, we're chain shaping, but you could drop the chain and just start swinging your single weapon fighting weapon. But I wouldn't do that until I hit level 12 and went into Enlightened Spirit. And then you'll have the build. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me um, either on the forums or send me an email on YouTube. And I will catch you guys for the next build later.